So there are some really, really interesting things on here, and one of the things that I, uh, I've tried to do is really think outside of the box when it comes to the resources that I list here. If you find a resource that you think is phenomenal that should be on this list, please let me know about it, I'm happy to add it. And that way this can continue and hopefully grow and be that one-stop shop that you can go to. Because as you were saying, you're, you're having to not only supplement textbooks, but create stuff out of nothing. And I want to make that as easy for you as I can. Because local history is a great um, entryway for students um, looking at history. You know, if they can connect something to their families or to the, uh, um, to the person that their street's named after, you know, just some, or, or what used to be where they live. Um, I think, you know, you can find a, a, a magnet, you know, for interest there. So um, the other thing that was helpful to me, I think, in looking at a smaller town like Barbersville, um, you know, even though it was rich in history, it's a small enough town um, that you can do the research, look at the census records in their entirety, and really kind of wrap your hands around the history of the town. So, you know, whether you're from the Barbersville area or from Mingo County or Greenbrier County, you know, there's, there's a history in your town and there's probably an unsung African American history in your town. So maybe this can maybe set an example of uh, um, a way to go about it and become a kind of an accidental historian like I have. And so we're looking at um, um, Appalachian writers, but we're looking specifically at Appalachian writers. And um, one of the first, or the one who coined that term, is a man named Frank X. Walker. He comes from Kentucky, and uh, he was presenting at a conference of um, writers from Kentucky, and he was the only African American on the program, and he couldn't understand why there weren't other African Americans represented there. And so he said something about it, and you know, they said, well, you know, they just didn't know any other African American writers of that time. And um, he said, so I started thinking about it, and I wanted to know how could we be represented and get ourselves known so that people would know that there were African American writers in the area, in the region. And uh, so he came up with the name the Appalachian Poets. It was poets at first. I mean, you gotta have a passion. The kids have to understand that you're interested in this. You can't just say, I want you to do a five page report on somebody you pick out and let's go with that. And I've met so many teachers that you know, and I don't like it. I go to conferences and they stand up there and they read your report. Word for word. Mm -hmm. Well, I read. I don't have to hear it. Have you read it to me? <laughs> so please encourage your student to learn what they're doing and be able to tell you about it. It doesn't have to be the same words. I can give this presentation 50 times and I'll never say the same thing. Because I am looking at giving you an idea of how to proceed. I was, uh, like many of you, asking the question of how do I reach my students? Uh, and it was at that time my third year of teaching here at Marshall. And uh, I noticed that local history uh, tended to resonate better than anything else. At one point, while asking myself, well, how do I reach these students? I noticed one of them had a tattoo of the outline of the state. And I thought, they've been trying to tell me for some time. Uh, the, our students have a unique uh, sense of place. Um, our region has its challenges, which have been well documented and do not need to be patched here. One of our strengths, though, and this is unique, and I've traveled all over the country and I've taught in multiple states, is our students have a strong sense of place, and a sense of pride about that place. 